Okay, if everybody will stand and pretend there's a flag up here, who's going to lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the, the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you, Pooh. <clears throat> you know, yesterday I talked uh, a lot about children. There was an awful lot of people here. Not as many people here today, but I think it's just important to talk a little bit about children before we start today, because that's really what this is all about. I'll be, gee, I've forgotten. I think 54 next month. I don't have a whole lot of more time to stick around here. And Annie and I could probably just go and, you know, make a good living and with the rest of our life just have a great time and party and, and uh, do what we want to do. But it wouldn't be the responsible thing to do because we would be living this total mess to our children who don't deserve it. It's our responsibility to leave them something else. And so <clears throat> that's what we, uh, that's why we're doing all of this. There's a lot of things that I'd much rather be doing. I have a degree in photography and that's really what I love to do. I'd much rather be up in the, the mountains stalking a herd of elk to get some fantastic shots that nobody else has ever got on film than be here doing this. But I look at my children and I I can't go do that because it's irresponsible of me to leave the world in the condition that it's in for my children to clean up after us. And the way things are going folks they won't have an opportunity to clean it up because by the time they get become of age where they could possibly do anything it's going to be all over. How many of you heard President Clinton's State of the Union address? What did he say? Anybody remember what he said? Huh? For the year 2000, why? To cross that bridge into what? And how did he put it? We're going to watch the sun set didn't he? And prepare our children for what? The new dawn. Now that went right over the head of most Americans, but if you've studied the symbology of the mystery schools and the Illuminati, the fraternal orders that are bringing this about, the socialists, the Marxists, the communists, who all speak that kind of language, what they were saying is we're going to destroy the world as it is now and we're preparing our children for the new world order. That's what he said. Most Americans didn't understand a word of it, didn't even know what in the world he was talking about. But I did, a lot of other people did, and every initiate on the face of this earth was sitting there with a big smile on their face, laughing at the rest of us profane fools. Cattle, they think we are. Their conception of us is a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence, are no better than animals who have no intelligence, and therefore are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent and are our lawful prey. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel? How many of you have a 32nd degree Freemason in your family? 30 on up know exactly what's happening and they're part of it. They'll tell you that they don't. They'll tell you that I'm a liar. And you ask them to tell them what they're doing, they can't tell you. They'll tell you some bullshit about their fraternal order existing for the good of the community. And they'll point to the hospitals that they built. Okay? They can't tell you the truth because what? By the time they've gotten to the 30th degree of the Scottish Rite, and this is just one organization I'm talking about. There are many under many different names where at the highest levels they are actually members of the Illuminati. The Illumined Ones, the Initiates, the Guardians of the Secrets of the Ages. They call themselves many different things. 
They've taken 30 different oaths that they will never disclose the secrets of the order. Blood oaths on penalty of death. And you say, hey, what about these oaths on penalty of death? All oh, those don't mean nothing. They're just, you know, ceremonies. How many of you believe that grown men put on robes and walk around in secret rituals in temples without windows and take blood oaths and don't mean it? How many of you believe that? And if they'll take those oaths and don't mean it, will they mean the one where they have their hand on the Bible? Of course not. They're lying to you. They are liars. Chronic liars. One of their ceremonies and oaths give them permission to lie. If it protects the secrets of the order. And tells them it's okay. Now it's important that you know this symbolism so that you understand what these people are talking about. Because Clinton was talking to the nation in the language of these secret orders and it went right over everybody's head. They didn't even know what he said. And he gave the timetable. What was the timetable? No, he said it in days. 1,000 days. Didn't he? Recently at a press conference, Sarah McClendon asked him a question. How many of you saw or heard that or read about it. She said, Mr. President, there's a lot of these crazy people in this country talking about concentration camps and they're going to be rounding up patriots and all this kind of stuff and, and, and I just want to know if you could say a few words to, you know, to clear this up because it's hurting the nation, Mr. President. What did he say? No, he didn't say it's posh. He did not deny it. What did he say? What he said, folks, is this. He says, there's some substance to that. And they can talk all they want to. We're all going in to the new century together, whether they want to or not. Direct quote. Now, <clears throat> how clear does it have to be before somebody wakes up? How many days do we have left now? See, I told you yesterday, I'm not nice to people anymore. There's no time to be nice. No time to stroke you and make you feel good. I got to wake you up quick. And I got to get you ready to fight for your freedom or you're going to make me a slave because you won't fight with me. Or you'll make me dead because I'm the only one fighting. I don't like those odds. But whether you're with me or not, I'm going to fight for my children. <clears throat> they're talking to us clearly. We don't hear what they're saying because we don't understand the language. We don't understand. How many of you saw the movie JFK? How many of you understood what was going on in that movie? How many of you understood that Oliver Stone told us who killed John F. Kennedy in that movie in clear language? And how many of you understood the message and can tell me now who did it? Not a one of you. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> how many of you listen to my show on a regular basis and understand some of the symbology? You should have spotted it immediately. He told us who killed the president in that movie. He knows. That's why they came down so hard on him about that movie. Not because he made that movie about the, the, the CIA was involved, but because in that movie he named the killers of the president. And all of those who participated in that murder understood what he said, the rest of the nation didn't. And it scared them because there's people like me out there teaching you the language. It scared them. Oliver Stone scared them. Now, you all saw in Dealey Plaza yesterday, what was there? Those of you who were here yesterday. The obelisk. 
the penis of Osiris. What was on top? The eternal flame. It's divided into 14 blocks, right? I'm not going to put exactly 14 here, but you all know that, right? Right next to it is what? Reflecting pool. Long, rectangular. That's the vagina. This is the penis. This is the vagina. This is the masculine. This is the feminine. This is Osiris. This is Isis. Osiris represents the sun. The reflecting pool represents the moon. The sun is the doctrine, the power, the god. Represents the source of all life on earth. The feminine reflects the light of her master. The feminine is the church. Isis is the church. Remember the story? Osiris was killed by Set. Where do you think we get Sun Set? <laughs> Osiris was killed by Set, chopped into 14 pieces. His body was scattered all over the kingdom. That represents the death of the true religion. The religion of science, the religion of the mind, the religion of ancient Babylon. Was killed by what? What was it killed by? Who killed it? Nobody knows? No. Who destroyed the ancient pagan religions? The Christian religion. Christianity and Christian kings and queens. Okay? The three blows to Hiram Abiff represent this same story in the Masonic initiation. Hiram Abiff represents the master builder of the temple. The temple represents what? The salvation of mankind, doesn't it? has nothing to do with Christianity or Judaism. This is all metaphor, symbols that convey a message. He was killed by three profane workers who wanted to know the secrets of the master. They couldn't wait to be initiated and to learn in the proper manner. They killed him. They killed him and they suppressed science, intellect, and the evolutionary progression toward perfection of humanity. This is their story, remember. It's not mine. I'm telling you what they believe, what I've learned in many years of research. Okay? In secret, they gathered together the pieces of the doctrine, the knowledge of the ancient religions put them all together in one place, but they could not bring it to life. Through the mystical union of the doctrine in secret with the church, behind closed doors of the lodges, this mystical union has produced the rebirth of Osiris, the intellect that was killed, as the child, what? Horus. The sun rises on the horizon. Horus, the rebirth. The symbol of all of this together is the phoenix bird. Who suffers the death, the mystical rebirth, and rises from the ashes of the destruction which killed it. So you have Osiris and Isis represents the doctrine in the church revitalized in secret bring forth through this mystical union of the masculine and the feminine the child Horus. The 
the child Horus is the full body of initiates, the adepts, the illumined ones, the priests, This was all represented in the ancient Egyptian mysteries as Osiris was killed by Set, sunset. He rode in his boat through the underground, through the mystical union between the dead parts assembled together by Isis, except for one. There produced the next morning the child Horus, which is the rising sun, who would then go to the zenith, do his father's work in the temple, become Osiris dying, and the whole pattern would repeat itself again. It meant something different in those days than it does now. What I've given you here is the modern interpretation. And these people have one goal. They have a great plan to unite all humanity on this earth in one world government, eliminate all existing religions, and put shackles on the mob. That's their goal. They're sworn to that. Everybody in America looks around for the enemy. They can't ever find the enemy. Because the enemy is your mothers, fathers, grandfathers, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, and friends next door who belong to these secret orders. Freemasonry, AMORC, the Rosa Cruci, the Knights of Pythias, the Knights of Malta, the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem, and I could go on and on and on and on. The ones at the lower levels don't know dip about what they're involved in. They're the fools. The ones at the highest levels are members of the adepts, the Illuminati, who work behind the veil, who are the thousand points of light, to bring this to fruition all the time. They have buzzwords and code phrases that they use to identify themselves to others. If you walk into a room and you see someone standing like this, he is a member of this secret order. He's identifying himself to others who know the secret signs. He has his feet in a 90 degree angle, and that tells every other adept in the room that he is one of them. There's another code word that a very famous man uses. When I raised my arm to the square, because when they take their initiation, they become, in the third degree, they put their arm on an open Bible on a square. Never heard that before, did you? There's a lot of other ones. Oh, are you a traveling man? Oh yes, I travel from west to east. And what are you seeking? I'm seeking the pure light of knowledge. <laughs> or I'm seeking the light of the master. How many of you have heard people talk like that? Anybody in here? And they're always going from west to east. Why? Where does the sun rise? In the east. In the lodges, where is the source of knowledge and society come from, civilization? The East. Always. Why does the master of the lodge have his chair in the East? He represents the rising sun, the new dawn, the golden age. See, when Clinton made that statement, to the Congress and to the world, he was delivering a message. 
We're going to reach the fruition of the work of hundreds and thousands of years of our secret order, and we have a thousand days left until its reality. And we are preparing our children for the new dawn. That's what he said. I've been trying to warn America for a long, long time. Time has run out, folks. It's all over. You have some serious decisions to make. You're either going to bend down and put the chains on your own ankles, or you're going to stand up and fight for freedom. And you better be making those choices now, because the day the fighting starts, it's too late to make your choice. You won't be prepared. And you're not too old, and you're not too young. Because in this battle, you can't sit on the fence. You can't sit on the fence. So here we have. What do we have in Washington, D.C.? What is this? Washington Monument. Well, if this was a Christian government, why do we have the penis of Osiris standing in our capital city? Next to a representation of the pagan goddess Isis in the reflecting pool. And what is at the end of the reflecting pool? Pardon? Well, I think you all better go home. There's two ends of the reflecting pool. And I think you better take a good look at a map of Washington, D.C. and find out what's there. Okay? That's your homework. Find out what's there. Where is the seed of the child Horus germinating? And producing the new world order. Washington, D.C. wasn't built by Christians, folks. Uh-uh. No, sir. And no, ma'am. You've all read books and heard references to the secret destiny of America, haven't you? What do you think they're talking about? Huh? <laughs> what do you think they're talking about? They're talking about what I'm teaching you right now. The secret destiny of America is to bring to completion the plan of the ages, the great work of the mystery schools to return the mystery religion of Babylon to the rulership of the world. And our founding fathers were so deeply involved in it that it makes some of you so angry because you've been taught something else that you storm off and you won't listen to anything beyond that point and so you're lost. You can't fight the battle because you don't know who the enemy is. You don't even know who you are. You've been lied to all your life. This is the age of deception. Who is the great deceiver? Even the elect shall be deceived. When are you going to learn that? How can you claim to be the elect if you're a Christian and then get insulted when I tell you you've been deceived? Your own book tells you that. You've been lied to all your life. All of us, not just you, me, everybody. I wasn't born with this knowledge. Most of my life was spent in stupid occupations and endeavors that meant absolutely nothing to anybody anywhere except in my silly mind. Until one day, I got a glimpse of the truth when they accidentally put me into a place where I had access to a lot of top secret documents that... I should never have seen and all of a sudden a light came on in my head and I spent the next 20 years trying to figure out what it all meant. And what it means is, like I told you yesterday, I reached a point where I had to go in, look myself in the, in the bathroom mirror and say, you are the stupidest idiot that has ever walked upon the face of this earth and you got to stop it right now. And there's nobody who's going to escape that. And if you haven't done it yet, you're going to have to do it someday, because it's true. 
You don't want to do it, but you got to do it. That's what's neat about doing it in the bathroom. Nobody has to see. Okay? You're not going to be embarrassed except to yourself. <clears throat> so look at all of this. You know what it means now. You know that they're speaking in a language that you've never understood before. Now you know how to decipher that much of it. Now go back to JFK. Remember when he went to Washington, D.C., and he met Mr. X in the Capitol steps? Remember that? And he walked along, and they're talking, and they sit on a bench. Well, in reality, this never happened. He put this in the movie so he could tell you who killed Kennedy. They sat on the bench, and they're talking, and there's a close-up. They fill the frame. You can't see what's behind them. Somebody's starting to get a little glimmer. He says, well, who killed him then? Well, it had to be somebody that had the opportunity and the power. And, the, and as he's clicking this off on his fingers, what is the camera doing? The camera's panning back. I can't believe you all watched the movie and you don't even remember what you saw. The camera's panning back. As the camera pans back, what is the answer to the question? The obelisk is directly behind these two men, and, and Oliver Stone is telling you who killed John F. Kennedy. He was killed by the same people who built the Temple of the Sun in Dealey Plaza on the site of the first Masonic Lodge in Dallas, Texas, where there is an obelisk with the eternal flame on top, with the reflecting pool, where the reflection of the obelisk points directly at the sixth floor window, which is the only square window in the building. Where there are the four quarters, of the Temple of the Sun. Dealey Plaza is in the shape of a pyramid with a capstone missing. What is the eye on top of the pyramid in place of the capstone? It's the tunnel under the railroad overpass. Wow! Now is it starting to make sense to you? And how are they laughing at all of us? How are they laughing at all of us? What did they put on the slain king's grave, the sacrificed king's grave? What did they put? The eternal flame. They marked their territory like a dog pees on a tire. They said, we killed him, and this is a message to everybody, don't mess with us. We are the philosophers of fire. We are the guardians of the secrets of the ages. We are the all-powerful hidden force of humanity, and we are going to enslave the world in our new world order, whether you like it or not. And they can do it as long as everybody remains stupid and doesn't know what's going on or who's bringing it about. If I had a 30-degree Freemason or a 32nd-degree Freemason in my family, which I thank God I don't, I would knock the shit out of him tonight. And that's the truth. And the same goes for Eastern Star. That's co-masonry. And at the highest level, they're exactly the same. <clears throat> I know some of you don't want to hear these things, but it's the truth. Now I'm going to play a little videotape. And it's, uh, you saw part of it, some of you, tomorrow. Now I'm going to play it all the way to the end. And if Doyle, if you'll come up here and start that, I'll play it all the way to the end now, and you'll get to see what I'm talking about here. You're going to see Dealey Plaza has this laid out. You're going to see what's in Dealey Plaza in reality. You're going to look at it. And then at the end, you're going to see some clips from Oliver Stone's film. And it's going to hit you right upside the head with the reality of the recognition of the lesson that you just received and you're going to be staggered by it if you really care about what's happening in this country. Yeah, the one that had the... Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay.
I'm going to come down here where I can uh, do that kind of stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, pay, pay close attention to this, folks. And uh, where it needs some elucidation, I will furnish that for you. <laughs> if you're not in a position where you can see this screen real good, I would advise you to uh, change your position now. This is Dealey Plaza. You can see that the layout is in the shape of a pyramid with a capstone missing up here. But there is a railroad overpass which creates the eye in the triangle that's normally above it. These are the four quarters that the pencil is pointing out of the Temple of the Sun, just like Stonehenge. If you take these four quarters, this is on a grassy knoll. This is right over here by the obelisk and the reflecting pool. This is right across the street, and then there's another one over here. If you put them all together, it would make a circle right in the middle, just like Stonehenge. This is Main Street here. This is Houston, where they turned right and left onto Elm. The first little X there is where Kennedy was shot in the throat. This is supposedly where he was shot in the back, and this, of course, is where the killing blow, the headshot, was administered. These are the exact same wounds suffered by Hiram Abiff in the Masonic initiation. Blow to the back, the throat, and the head. This is an aerial view from helicopter of Dealey Plaza in a couple of the uh, sections of the Temple of the Sun. That's the grassy knoll. There was nobody on the grassy knoll with a high-powered rifle with a scope on it. the corner of Maine and Houston. People go to Dealey Plaza every day and walk around and don't see anything. Right over here is the entrance to the parking garage where Lee Harvey Oswald was shot. See, everything took place in Dealey Plaza. It had to. It had to take place in the temple. And what time were they moving Lee Harvey Oswald that he was shot? You see, it always happens at noon. The sacrifice is always made at noon. Here's the obelisk. If you count those blocks, there's exactly 14. There's the eternal flame. If you notice, all the windows in the book depository building are domed. All of them, except for one. The sixth floor. <laughs> How many of you realize it was the sixth floor? where there's the only square window in the building out of which Lee Harvey Oswald is supposed to have made the shot. On that plaque you can see that it's dedicated to the first fraternal lodge in the city of Dallas. There you're looking at one of the quarters of the Temple of the Sun. Here's the obelisk, the phallus of Osiris with the eternal flame on top. First time I walked into Dealey Plaza, I knew instantly what had happened there and who did it. Nobody had to tell me. They're also known as the secret college, the secret government. And I took this shot on purpose because it divides the obelisk into two columns of darkness and lightness. Because this is a war between the forces of dark and the forces of light. But the enemy is the great deceiver. And so he represents himself as the light. This is Isis, the reflecting pool. 
the feminine, the vagina. The reflection of the obelisk in the reflecting pool points directly to this window. That's the only square window in that building. Even the ones up here have domed tops to them. They keep that window propped open all the time with a little box in there so the public will know which window Lee Harvey Oswald was supposed to have shot John F. Kennedy from. However, he was not up there. This is where Oswald was shot in the parking garage there. That's the old courthouse over there. This secret order has also been known as the, what? Order of the Dragon, the Order of the Snake. On top of the courthouse, you can see their mark here, the dragon. This is not a griffin, this is a dragon. Look at all those people, oblivious. Oh look, a little, let's throw a penny in and make a wish. See where that's pointed to? If you look at the reflection, it's pointed directly at the sixth floor window. Look at this guy, he's cool. Look at her, she's taking her child to teach him something about the Kennedy assassination. See the two quarters across here? There's another quarter right over there, right behind those trees. And on this side, of course, on the grassy knoll, there's another quarter. They're marked on the columns by pentagrams. And you can see the pyramidal shape of the plaza. This is behind the grassy knoll, looking at the railroad tower. There's the one quarter of the Temple of the Sun. I've stood there. No professional assassin would ever make that a point from which to shoot at anyone to assassinate them moving along Elm Street. In the first place, the target is too close. In the second place, there are trees and bushes and signs all along here. You'd have to be more than an expert marksman. You'd have to be Jesus Christ himself to make that shot. And I really don't think Jesus Christ would be up to it. That's the railroad tower where you've heard testimony about. Right over here is where Zepp Ruder stood. Right on there. See that little wall? That's where he was standing when he took his uh, famous Zepp Ruder film. Right there is where the uh, car came around the corner, turned, and came down this way. Long before Kennedy was assassinated, this was built. Now, if you go back and read the writings of the adepts of this order, you'll see that there's certain things had to transpire in order to create the new world order, and one was to sacrifice the king. Another one was to change matter into energy, and all of these things happen on the 33rd parallel all of them. Why? Anybody know why? No. As the sun traverses in its path from midwinter to midsummer, it traverses what? 33 degrees. 16 and a half degrees on each side of the equator. Isn't that true? Is that 33 degrees? You bet your boots it is. So, it begins at w its work at 30 and ends its work at 33. Coincidentally, so did Jesus Christ. So do the Illuminati. They begin their work in the 30th degree and they disappear behind the veil at the 33rd degree. And then they have another 63 degrees up the ladder that they can go. Actually, 66 degrees. And then from there, they can go laterally into the Ordo Templi Orientalis, 
which is Aleister Crowley's organization for another nine degrees. So you may see people who signed their name, and after their name there will be 33, 96, and Roman numeral 9. Those are the highest adepts in the secret orders that are bringing about the destruction of the world as we know it. This is from the railroad overpass. Look at that. From the railroad overpass, or from down where Kennedy was actually shot in the head, you look up, that pyramid of that other building is right above the spot on the, on the book depository building under which is the square window from which Lee Harvey Oswald supposedly shot John F. Kennedy. But Lee Harvey Oswald was never there. He was never up there. We have a photograph of him actually standing in the doorway of the book depository building as Kennedy is being shot. He's watching the motorcade go by as any normal human being would be doing. Yeah. That's one of them. The one that you're thinking of was actually up further. Up the, that sign's been removed. There were also three hobos found in a railroad car who were arrested and then let go. One of them, of course, was who? Howard Hunt. We also know the identities of the other two. They represented the three murderers of Hiram Abiff in the Masonic initiation. Jubelo, Jubelum, and Jubela. They had to be there because this whole thing is symbolic. It's ritualistic. Uncle Jim will tell you, oh, we don't do anything in Freemasonry. We just, you know, just a bunch of guys get together. Really, when did Uncle Jim become so stupid? Grown men don't do that. Especially with the huge amounts of money you have to pay. Look at that to go up through the degrees. It costs a lot of money to be a Freemason. Did you know that? It's not cheap. You see in each of those posts, right around, right there, there's a, a pentagram. It's on the posts of the uh, of the uh, sections of the uh, Temple of the Sun. Everywhere there's a post and the top member crosses, there's a pentagram. When it went in there for that close-up, you could have seen them very clearly. But I failed to point that out at that point. But if you go to Dealey Plaza, you'll see them very clearly. Also, if you purchase our Zapruder tape, it's on there. All of this footage is on our Zapruder tape, including the Zapruder film, including frame by frame, so that you can examine every frame any way you want to, front, back, forward, all of it. It's in back. It's another building that's been built. <coughs> There's John F. Kennedy. President in the Oval Office. I um, is there a volume on this Doyle? I don't remember. I I don't remember where the volume comes in, but there's going to be volume coming up here shortly. You get a minute 
message in the lobby and you'll be able to run it. they had a big white circle on the window of the book depository when I went by it. Did that have any relevance? The white circle is one of the symbols. It's the snake eating its tail. Usually you'll see that there's a dot in the center of the circle. That's the symbol of the phallus of Osiris also. It's also the symbol of the generative force the intercourse between the male and the female or the unification of the doctrine in the church which produces the child chorus. This is the Zepruder film. You'll never see it better than this in your whole life. This is the very best copy that can be obtained anywhere. Now it's a little off color. That's this TV set. There's a little bit too much red but it's not going to stop you from uh, seeing what you need to see. She wasn't retrieving a part of his skull on the deck of that limousine. She was trying to get out of there. See that white car under the underpass? That car was there and didn't start to move until Kennedy's limousine almost ran into it. That car belonged to the chief of police of Dallas. I should say the Dallas Chief of Police. Here it is a little slower. Now the reason a lot of the frames are blurred, people complain about this, nobody can do anything about it. Home movie cameras at that time in 8 millimeter format that used Kodachrome had a shutter speed that could only go at its very fastest 1 30th of a second. So if you're hand holding any camera, I don't care how good you think you are, and you're shooting at 1 30th of a second, you're going to have most of your photographs come out blurred. Especially if you're tracking something that's moving. Every once in a while, through a trick, see here's the umbrella. Every once in a while through a trick of fate or accident or something, you will get a perfectly clear picture, but it's very rare. Kennedy's been shot in the throat. Somewhere along here, he's shot in the back. You can see when Connolly gets hit because his cheeks puff up and he falls back into his wife's lap. You can see up here, watch this. It appears that the driver turns around and shoots Kennedy in the head. Shortly after that, you see a big flash here. When you slow it down and examine the whole frame, you'll see glass shards falling down, which appears that a bullet hit the windshield. And we know that one bullet did hit the windshield. Jacqueline was trying to escape from that car. I don't know. If I had a hunch I was being set up, I've learned to listen to my hunches. I wouldn't have gone to Dallas. And I don't think John F. Kennedy was a fool. He certainly didn't impress me as being a fool. So I don't think he had the slightest idea. When was he shot? November what? 22nd. 22nd. What month is November? What day? Add the two together, what do you get? 33. Dealey Plaza is just a very short distance from the 33rd parallel. In fact, on a very large map of the world, it is on the 33rd parallel. You get down to nitty gritty, large-scale maps, and it's a little bit off. But it's close enough 
for their work. Because I'm sure that first fraternal lodge in Dallas was thought to have been placed on the 33rd parallel. These are just some uh, frame by frames. You see, these guys aren't too concerned. The president's been shot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, me. Gee, what shall we do? Secret Service. They're supposed to protect his life. Do they look upset? They look concerned? No. Are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? No. What's the job of the driver of a car? of an executive or a president or a member of government when he is attacked protect him and get him out of there that guy in the passenger seat should have climbed over that seat and thrown himself over the president that's his job the driver should have got that car out of there as quickly as possible they didn't do either of those things did they no. When we examine this very closely, we find some strange things. We find the emulsion scraped off the film here, here, all up here in the front seat. Up here we find, some people say that's a reflection on Kellerman's head, but it's not because his headline goes right where I'm showing you. Well, I can't hold it steady enough, but right under here. It's actually floating above his head. It's not on his head at all. The emulsion was scraped off here. It was scraped off here. Emulsion has been scraped off up here. This is not chrome. These are the visors of the car. You'll see flesh that appears to throw the same reflection as sunlight on chrome. That's impossible. All of these white places you see, this is actually where it's been scraped off, not only on his head, but up into the grass. either covering up the fact that Kennedy was shot by one of these two guys in the front seat or they're trying to make us believe that he was. We don't know because we can't tell what's there where they've scraped the emulsion off the film. Look at this. That's where the emulsion's been removed from the film. Here, here, down here. Here's Kellerman's headline right there Connolly made the statement that he saw and felt the shot that killed Kennedy what we can't see is Greer's right arm where's his right arm and what's it doing look at this Kellerman's head if that's a reflection See, here's, here's his headline right here. When you blow that up, it's easy to tell. So there's emulsion scraped off the film above Kellerman's head and across Greer's face, all across here, across Kellerman's forehead, inside the car where there is no sunlight hitting at all. There's no sun hitting down in here. It's all in shadow. So we don't know what they're trying to hide or what they're trying to make us believe. You can't tell. When the film is played at normal speed, it looks like Greer turns around and shoots the president. When I was in the Office of Naval Intelligence, I saw top secret documents that said the driver of his limousine, William Greer, is the man who administered the headshot. Would, would Mrs. Connolly and, and especially her know if somebody fired a gun from the front seat? Well, why would they not sure they would know. They didn't want to be next. If the Secret Service, the person who guards the president, is involved in killing him, who's safe? Who was guarding Jacqueline's children? Who still guards them? 
the Secret Service. If it was safe in that car and the assassins were outside the car, why did she try to get out of the car? If you're in a car surrounded by people trying to kill you, would you try to get out? No, I'd be beating that driver over the head with my purse. Get moving, sucker! He didn't do that, did he? He almost stopped the car. The car comes almost to a complete stop, and that is absolutely against every training and order that they ever receive. This is not the way they're supposed to act in this circumstance. Now you see them ducking down. Look at them ducking down. And it looks like they're passing something back and forth down here, but the emulsion's been scraped off, so we can't tell what it is. Whatever it is, Kellerman puts it in the glove compartment right there. Look at this. This is flesh and clothing. Here's where something hits the windshield right here. See the glass fly? And after they cut, too. Yeah. And that bullet came directly in front of the car. What's in front of that car? Another car parked under the overpass in which the Dallas Chief of Police is with another member of the Dallas Police Department. It didn't come from top of the overpass because there's people up there and nobody shot from up there. Although, there was a train on the tracks up there behind those people who were looking toward Kennedy's car. There could have been men with high-powered rifles on top of those cars with silencers shooting at the president. It's possible. And as soon as the president was assassinated, that train moved out and nobody ever chased that train to find out if there was or not. But all this is conjecture. Conjecture means nothing, at least in my world. You can throw conjecture out, but don't ever start to believe your own conjecture or anybody else's. Only believe what you can prove. Conjecture is worthless. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, can you stop that? Just stop it right where it's at. We'll take a little break. Call John Palmer right away. This full name. Let me repeat. Yeah. Is Doyle out there somewhere? Okay, I've got some uh, not so good news to give you. I think most of you know by now that I'm the director of intelligence for the Second Continental Army of the Republic, which is one of the largest militias in the country. And our people are everywhere. So if anything happens, they notify me immediately. Just stay very short while ago, some of the people from the Republic, the so-called Republic of Texas, went into town in Fort Davis in a van and were arrested by the sheriff. Richard McLaren, who is the so-called <laughs> ambassador for the Republic of Texas, who has his home in Fort Davis, and his following got upset about this and went to a neighbor and kidnapped the neighbor and his wife and are holding them hostage. And so we have a very bad situation developing. The official position of the Second Continental Army of the Republic, I have just spoken with the commanding officer on the telephone, 
is that since they have taken hostages, we cannot support them in any way whatsoever. They have done a no-no. So now you know what's going on, you know our official position, and you're going to have to make up your own mind what stance that you take on this. We've done a lot of uh, study into this Republic of Texas stuff and find out that where they may have some legal grounds for what they say, they have screwed themselves by lying, telling an awful lot of lies, and they're split into three factions who have three different presidents of the Republic of Texas at the present time. Richard McLaren, McLaren who uh, claims that he is the official ambassador for the Republic of Texas, was officially kicked out of the Republic of Texas by one of the other two presidents. <laughs> so, you know, at this point, when they go and take innocent hostages, they've gone beyond the pale of being legitimate. You can't do that. But that's what's happening right now. And this hostage taking just occurred just a few minutes ago. And my people are there and they're watching the whole situation. So if anything develops, we'll know about it before anybody else does. Where at? In Fort Davis, Texas. Okay, if we can uh, start this again, we'll continue where we left off. I hate to give you bad news like that. But there are no end to fools in this world. And an awful lot of them seem to be in this country today for some reason. Yeah. Who's the uh, video expert that we had? Has he disappeared? Could somebody, does anybody know where they're at? Okay, thanks. Pardon? Well, punch, uh, hit the button if you can find it. See, it's not so easy, is it? <laughs> ah, here he comes. Here comes the expert. <laughs> Yeah, good, thanks. Okay, here we go. Good. So, we continue. You can see in the back seat now, you can see there's no, nothing's been done to Kennedy or Jacqueline at this point. Now, do you think in just a second's time, all of a sudden, they're going to be reflecting light like you never saw before in your life? Look, watch this. He's hit in the head now. Whatever hit him in the head isn't just a projectile. It exploded. This is an explosion that occurred up on impact. Now all of a sudden you can't see the wounds. And now all of a sudden there are great big reflections here on stuff that should be covered with blood and things that are not reflective. They've literally, once again, scraped the emulsion from the film. They did a very poor job here because you can still see some of the red tint to the blood. It literally blew half his head off is what happened. You see this? This is emulsion scraped off of the film, even into the grass. Look up here. The grass and the curb, the emulsion has been scraped away also. Now all of a sudden, you can't see anything. Look at all this. This is scraped off the film, folks. All of this. It's all gone. Why did they allow the film to even exist? Well, once you know the film exists, it's impossible to say it doesn't. Too many people knew. Abraham Zapruder took it to the local processing place and had this film processed immediately. And he had him hurry up and do it. And he told, he phoned all the news people. They showed it on TV that night. The whole world knew about it. And then the government said, oh God, we've got to get that film. No telling what it shows. 
They took it away from Zepruder, took it to the National Photographic Laboratory in Washington, D.C., and that's where we believe they did all this alteration to the film. No copies were made? No. Do you think a rubber bullet or something did the other two wounds? You said that didn't go very deep? Something I have no idea what made them. That I fought in a war. I know what a bullet wound looks like, and I've never seen a bullet in my life that will only go like uh, three-quarters of an inch in somebody's throat. A BB gun will almost do that. Look at this. That is so obvious, it's unbelievable. Look at that. Just totally scraped off. No, that's where the emulsion has been removed from the film to cover up the truth about his wound so you can't see it. Now this is Jacqueline's white gloves. That's her white glove. She has blood all over her. Look at her. Look at the horror. Now that's a woman who's been protected all her life. Never been close to anything horrible. From one of the most wealthiest families in the country. Taken care of, pampered, always had money. Can you imagine what she felt there? And what did she do? Did she try to get out and protect herself? She tried to get out of the car. Connolly's laying down in his wife's lap, yelling, They're going to kill us all! She said, Not me. I'm leaving. <laughs> Stay if you want to. I'm getting out of here. Now look at the deck. Look at the rear lid. There's nothing there. These two things are antennas. They're supposed to be there. These are handholds for the Secret Service. There's nothing else on the deck of that car. There is no piece of his head. She did not go back there to pick up anything. It's a lie. You can see it. Anybody see anything there that's not supposed to be there? Anybody in this room? No, because there isn't anything. You've been lied to for years by people who tell you that they're experts telling you the truth, like Bob Groden, one of the biggest liars that's ever lived on the face of this earth. He claimed he was the world's leading independent photo analyst, and he analyzed the Zepruder film. He never told you that it was doctored. He never told you that this brake light right here was opaqued, which is a common term for blocking out the passage of light through film. You can see the other brake light right there as clear as day. Both of them were working fine. This one's been opaqued. Because normally when they show it on television you can't see that brake light. They did a quick job. A very quick job. Blew it up, made a copy, and gave it for use on television where you only saw that brake light. They didn't want you to know that the driver of the car, against all orders, was stopping the car instead of speeding it up. That's why. He didn't tell you about all the emulsion removed from the film on Kennedy's head and in the front seat and the driver and the face and the head of Kellerman and Greer. He didn't tell you any of that. Said he lied to you and said she went back on the deck of that car to pick up a piece of his head. Bob Groden is a liar. I've said it publicly all across this country. I've said it to his face. He hasn't sued me yet, so it must be true. <laughs> well, had the driver sped up, she wouldn't have tried to get out of the car either. Well, I, I don't know. If the guy that just killed my husband and shot the guy that was riding with him in the car was in the car with me, I'd try to get out of the car. No, they're trained. You see, they go through drills. If the president is assassinated while riding in his car, you will do this, this, and this. They're supposed to get down on the floorboards. The driver is supposed to maneuver the car and do what he's been trained to do to get them out of the kill zone, out of the area of danger, and take them to safety. The Secret Service people following and in front of the 
the President's limousine have jobs that they're supposed to do. They're supposed to pinpoint the direction of the fire and return fire and kill those people as quickly as they can. Yeah. That's right. The man who was in the front seat with Greer is supposed to go climb over that seat and cover the president's body with his own. He didn't do it. This is all public knowledge. There's no secret about this. They didn't do any of it. There's the car that belongs to the chief of police. It's parked stationary under that overpass. It doesn't even move until Kennedy's car almost runs into the back of it and then it clears out of there. What was it doing under there? What happened to the driver's career or his lifestyle after this? Did he live for a while? Yeah. Did he suddenly have a nice home in the Cayman's or something? No, he didn't uh, deviate from his normal. No. no. None of them did. But you see, that's not the way the Illuminati works. You do it because you're told to do it. Because it's a part of the great plan. And you've taken an oath. That you must do what you're told to do when the order asks you to do it. Whatever. The order will take care of their family. That's the promise. If they go to jail or they get killed, they did it for the greater good. See that? That's the actual top of Kellerman's head right there. This is actual Greer's shoulder right there. You can see this up here is where the emulsion has been scraped off to either hide what Greer is holding in his arm, which is right there, or to make us believe that he's holding something in his hand. You can't tell at this point. Look at that. That's obvious. You can see the top of Kellerman's head right here. And that's emulsion's been scraped up not only on the top of his head, but up into Greer's face. Any photographer can just rip this to shreds. Look at the back of Kellerman's head. You can see the natural curve right here. Look at this. It's all been scraped off up there. People say, Cooper's crazy. That's a reflection off of Kellerman's head. To get that kind of reflection on anybody's head, ladies and gentlemen, would require a whole jar of Brill Cream. <laughs> you think government agents grease up their head like that? No. Look at that. There's the natural curvature of Kellerman's head. That's not a reflection on his head. It's where the emulsion has been scraped off clean above his head and across Greer's face. Can you all see it clearly? Am I telling you the truth? If you can't see it well, come up and look for yourself. Get closer. I don't want you to go out of here with any doubts. Well, I can't see it now. You're too late. <laughs> Got to be quick. This is where it appears a bullet struck the window, the windshield. And we know that one bullet did strike the windshield. That's on record. They have admitted that. You can see glass fly there. And these are reflections off shards of glass that are flying down beside the car from that bullet strike. Now, a lot of you have seen the photograph of the car in front of Parkland Hospital with the roses in the back seat. How many of you have seen that? Everybody thought that was Kennedy's car, and they said, well, there's no hole in the window. It wasn't Kennedy's car. That was not the car that Kennedy was shot in. Didn't even have any blood in the back seat. There was blood all over the car that Kennedy was shot in. How many of you have been in a war? Nobody in here? I'm the only one? One other man? You've seen a head wound, right? A head wound is the bloodiest thing you'll ever see in your life. Great amounts of blood flow to the head through the carotid arteries. 
you're shot in the head, blood goes everywhere. It spurts in a solid stream. I've seen head wounds. Head wounds produce lots of blood. That's why people get so scared when a little child hurts themselves on their head because there's a lot of bleeding. They're not really hurt, but there's so much blood coming out it scares the hell out of the parents. Look at this. Emulsion scraped off. Look at that. Look at it. Scraped off even up into the grass. That's not on Kennedy, that's way up in the grass. And the curb across his forehead where the bullet struck, his face, all scraped off. Next time you see Bob Groden and he's talking to you and you're in the audience, <laughs> say, tell us the truth, you lying sack of crap. Who's that? Who is that? Oswald, that's right. Where is he? He's in the doorway of the book depository at the moment Kennedy's being shot with all of those other people. Who's this? Lee Harvey Oswald. It's the same guy wearing the same shirt. They said he went home and changed his shirt. He didn't even change his shirt. He's got the same shirt on that he was wearing when he was standing in the doorway of the book depository building. These people have lied to us all over the, all over the place. Pardon? A reporter. Who's this? Prouty. Who's Prouty? Turn it up. Listen carefully. Nothing was left to chance. He could not be allowed to escape alive. Well, I never thought things were the same after that. Vietnam started for real. It was an era of, I don't know, make-believe in the Pentagon and CIA. Those of us who'd been in secret ops since the beginning knew the Warren Commission was fiction. But there was something, there was something deeper, uglier. I know Alan Dulles very well. I've briefed him many a time in his house. But for the life of me, I still can't figure out why he was appointed to investigate Kennedy's death, the man who had fired him. Dallas, by the way, was General Wyeth's benefactor. I got out in 64, resigned my commission. I never realized Kennedy was so dangerous to the establishment. Is that why? Well, that's the real question, isn't it? Why? The how and the who is just scenery for the public oswald ruby cuba the mafia keeps them guessing like some kind of parlor game prevents them from asking the most important question why why was kennedy killed who benefited who has the power to cover it up who 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 he asked the question and he gives you the answer and it went right over the heads Went right over the heads of the whole nation. Did Oliver Stone know who killed Kennedy? You bet your boots he did. He just told you right there. He showed you. Could he come out and say it in any other way? And live? No. But he told you, didn't he? He did the best he could. He can't help it if we're all so damn stupid, can he? He knows what I know. He showed you. He told you. He asked the question, how plain can it be? And then he backed off the camera and showed you. Go ahead, let it go. <laughs> or I'll tell you what, let's just go into, take that video out and put in 2001 and we'll start from the beginning. I'm going to show you how they communicate all the time and it goes right over our heads. We don't understand it. We don't know it. We miss it. How many of you saw the movie 2001? How many of you understood what you saw? You understood it? What? Give me the message. Pardon? 
Yeah. Okay, good. You got it. But the rebirth was what? As a new race in the new age. And the message was, if you can't make this quantum leap, you can't be a part of it. That was the symbol of the baby floating in space. The birth of the new root race going into the new age. And if you can't make this quantum leap and understanding that we're showing you in this movie, you can't be a part of it. You will be exterminated, rounded up, put in prison camps, used as slave labor, executed, whatever. We'll try to get some use out of you, but you cannot be in the new age with us. The new dawn, the rebirth of humanity. You starting to get the message? Are you really? Because if you don't, you have no idea how important this is. If you don't, you're lost. You won't even understand what happens and why it's happening to you. Yes, sir? What do you mean by root race? Have you studied the writings of Blavatsky or any of the New Age religion, which will be the new religion of the One World Order? You need to. Everybody says, I'm not going there. It's New Age stuff. That's the work of the devil. I'm not reading that because it's not Christian. If you don't read it, how are you going to understand it? How are you going to know how to fight the enemy if you don't know who the enemy is or what they believe? You've got to. Okay, back it up. It starts with the MGM lion. <laughs> the lion is the symbol of what? The king, the ruler. Okay, here we go. Watch this carefully. Remember, Osiris, Isis, Apollo goes across the heaven in the chariot. Osiris rode across the heavens in the boat of Isis. You're going to see it here in a moment. All of the symbology is going to be played out in front of you. Watch carefully. Who is Lucifer? How hath there fallen for heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? What is the son of the morning? Horus, being reborn as his father Osiris, right? Actually, Hyrus, Osiris being reborn as his own son um, Horus. It's also played out in the Lion King when the little lion looks into the pond and sees his father staring back at him in his own reflection. There it is. There's Osiris riding across the boat of Isis. Isis is the moon. Osiris is the sun. Isis reflects the pure light of her master. Check it out. And here is what? The earth bathed in darkness. The home of the profane. See, you all just thought that was pretty, didn't you? Oh, that's cute. Gee. <laughs> These guys are real artists. They made some cute stuff in the beginning. It's really neat. It means something. They're showing you the mystical intercourse between the sun, the phallus of Osiris, and the moon, Isis, which produces the full body of initiates, the adepts, the Illuminati, the Illuminati have a God of light. Hi, sweetheart. Then the 2001 means something. Annie, would you come and get baby? I have to do this, okay? Please. I'm sorry, honey. I can't pick you up right now. Now, this is all symbolic. Here, what do you see? The golden dawn. This is the dawn of the golden age. The dawn of man. There's nothing here, some clouds, some ground, no green stuff growing. You can hear some insects begin to make their presence known. 
You see, it's just mostly just a vast desert. The sun rises higher, and what happens? You see things beginning to materialize. Trees, shrubs, some grass is growing. There is the phallus. The generative force is at work. You hear the wind blowing. When the wind blows, it signifies an age is passing, a long period of time. But the spirit is moving upon the waters. That's the way the Bible would say it. Here, they say it with the wind. A long period of time is passing. Things are happening. Animals come and go and they leave their traces behind them. These are epochs. And then this little creature appears upon the scene. He's a peaceful little fellow. He eats nuts and roots and berries and plants. He lives peacefully side by side with the animals that he will later kill and eat. <clears throat> 